Spondylolisthesis. What are the things that you want to do? What are the right things to do so that you are not only eliminating the wrong things, but also adding the right things and that can have a significant impact on making progress. For a while, avoid those things that are on the list of activities to avoid and let that vertebrae stabilize because the body does have the capacity to heal to some degree. Ligaments can get more stiff. Loose ligaments can build up collagen and get more stiff and an instability can become stable. I think for me, it took about a year to stabilize my spine once I started doing the right thing. The first thing is to realize that flexion or forward bending may not be that bad for you if you have a spondy because it's not part of the cause. It is like kind of lengthening the lower back muscles that get chronically tight that could be contributing to the cause. And it may just be able to offer you a little relief. Now is forward bending, touching your toes, hanging on your ligaments in like a forward fold gonna be the solution to a spondy? No, because you're hanging on your ligaments. That's stretching them and, and it's you're trying to stabilize. You don't typically stretch something you're trying to stabilize, right? If you sprain your ankle, you're not going to go stretch your ankle. You're going to put it in a cast. And so it's the same idea and we can't put our spine in a cast. So we have to use our core muscles to brace it. So for the reason of just maybe offering a little relief and not like directly contributing to the problem, forward bending is okay. Now here's the one adjustment that I think could be okay. And that is the opposite of what most people do. And it's actually very rare. I've seen it a couple times. It's an anterior to posterior adjustment. So we're looking at somebody standing and anterior of their body, posterior of their body. If you adjust them in this direction and push the spondy back, take this vertebrae and push it back in the opposite direction. So the adjustment like this could be helpful. And the practitioner actually has to go around your intestines. So they kind of push your intestines over to the side as much as they can and go through the, around the side of them and kind of wrap around and try to get their thumb here and then they push on it. And so it was a very uncomfortable adjustment. It's like a slow motion punch in the stomach. You still are thrusting the spine, which is you're, you're moving an instability, which isn't something you want to do, but it could potentially just get it a little more in alignment. And then what you would want to do after that is to try and keep it there by doing stabilization exercises. Typically adjustments will have only a short term effect unless you do the work afterwards to stabilize and keep the adjustment in place. My true belief of the best thing that you can do for a spondy involves finding your pubic bone, like really like discovering your pubic bone and getting a great relationship with it and learning how to connect to it with your abdominal muscles and keep that thing forward. Because what happens with anterior pelvic tilt, so this is a person facing to the right, we're looking at them from the side, right? And their face is over here. This is the lumbar spine, it's backward bending. The anterior pelvic tilt would be the position that they're in now. And this is a posterior tilt. Posterior tilt is opening up the spine, okay? Posterior tilt is doing the opposite of a spondy. Now, take a look at the pubic bone. Here's your pubic bone right here. This is the attachment site of the abdominal muscles. Abdominals come down from the rib cage and attach to fascia that all eventually leads into the pubic bone. Take a look at it. It's back. Guess what happens when you pull it forward, okay? Abdominals increase their tension and pull the pubic bone forward and the spine opens up. Okay, so the easy way is squeeze your glutes. This person's squeezing their glutes, their pubic bone's gonna come forward and their spine will open up, they'll post to your tilt, but guess what? You can't function with your glutes squeezed all day long. You're gonna walk around looking like you got a stick up your butt. Those muscles are designed for power, for movement, for bursts, for running. And like sometimes you don't even use your glutes walking. You don't really need them, they're power muscles. So yes, you can post to your tilt with them, but the muscle that can keep, the muscle group that can keep you in a more neutral pelvis position is these abdominals that are not designed, the deep abdominals are not designed for movement or for power, they're designed for all day long stability and endurance. A, a low level connection all day long, imagine a rope here and it's on slack, it's, it's, it's loose and you tighten that rope up, you're pulling that rope up, the pubic bone comes forward. This is a connected pubic bone to the rib cage. This one is not, it's, it's on slack and this can allow the pubic bone to slip backwards. You have your tailbone sticking out and your anterior tilt and your spondy is getting pulled on by these hip flexors right here. This is only showing the six pack abdominals. But this 
there are more abdominals that are more important than the six pack. So what's more important than the abs rope is the abs sheath, those deeper abdominal muscles that act like a corset. For me, that that's the number one main focus. And you can see the three core anchors is a major, major component of the core balance training solution. It's my favorite one. It's the life-changing one. If you can get this connection strong, look what can happen to the hip flexors. Their tension can kind of let go and feel safe to stop trying to protect and tighten and go into the protective mechanism and they can yank less on the lumbar spine. So the list of things to do besides the interventions of like what I was talking about earlier, an anterior to posterior adjustment, the forward bending, these are all temporary things. But the long-term thing is if you can build that connection to your pubic bone with your abdominal muscles and have just a little more tone in those muscles as you go about your day, you can actually do anything and it could be good for your body. There's a lot of hope to make changes to your posture and the way that you relate to your body and the way you carry yourself and, and your core connection, your, your connection to your, your deep abdominal muscles to get back to pretty much a normal life. That's where I felt that I've gotten back to for the most part. If I know I have to do a backbend, say I'm this girl here and I'm like in a yoga class and then like do a cobra and I'm like, I wanna be part of the class. I don't wanna be left out. I would be squeezing my glutes as tight as I can, trying to throw my pelvis into a posterior tilt, pubic bone forward, basically pubic bone as far forward as possible. And so that biases my pelvis into a back bend. I'm getting some extension in the hips and then I can get a more uniform extension through the spine. It's not just hinging right at the pelvis right there like a door hinge. So that's one thing you can do to protect your spondy is just massive glute stuff. And then also getting as much flexibility above the unstable segment, getting thoracic mobility, which is one of the heavy focuses of the program is more mobility here, stabilize here, more mobility here. So you're getting more, more mobility above and below the unstable segment. That's how you can maintain or improve flexibility without damaging the spondy. Improve the mobility above and below the unstable section and try to keep this stable. Feel free to support the stream, support what we do, hit that like button and uh, tell your friends, share the link. That's the goal to get the word out there.